Mindanao has been the traditional home of most Muslim Filipinos since the 14th century when the Muslim missionaries arrived and started the colonization of this territory and conversion of the people to Islam. ARMM or the Autonomous Region of the Philippines located in the Mindanao Island Group of the Philippines is consisted of five predominantly Muslim provinces, namely Basilan, Lanao del Sur, Maguindanao, Sulu, and Tawitawi. Since most Muslim Filipinos live in this region, their conversion to the Islamic religion led them to have various cultures and traditions that revolve among their beliefs. Despite their horrific past, the region aims to reduce poverty and achieve lasting peace to help ensure inclusive growth. The ARMM have gone through hard times and continue to face tough times because of unfortunately centuries of social political violence, armed clashes, kidnappings, and most recently war and bombings that have turned every thought associated to the ARMM or Mindanao in general is dangerous and fear. We're going to talk about one of the regions located in this tropical archipelago, the region of Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, or ARMM. Are you dreaming of an adventure in the southernmost part of the Philippines? Well, take a trip towards ARMM. This region, located in the island group of Mindanao, is not exempt in hosting beautiful tourist spots that will surely be a treat for the eyes. Some of the famous places include Rio Grande de Mindanao, the longest river in Mindanao and the second largest in the Philippines. Its 320-kilometer journey, Sitangkay, an island in Tawi-Tawi, Philippines, known as the Venice of the East, for its houses that are built on stilts above water. Sitangkay Island is a sword-shaped island west of Cebutu. Finally, we have Bulingan Falls, a majestic example of a waterfall in Basilan, Philippines. Bulingan Falls is truly a wonder of nature given as a gift to the island of Basilan. The falls feature clear waters cascading through a wall of natural rock formation. Aside from these wonderful sights, ARMM also has many festivals and events that showcase their diverse culture and tradition. One of these festivals is the Cariala Festival of Lanao del Sur. The Cariala Festival was the highlight of the celebration last February 8, 2018. Cariala gathered the people of Wau from different tribes for a colorful Thanksgiving and celebration of peace, prosperity, and bountiful harvest. Another festival is the Inaul Festival. This festival celebrates the Inaul Maguindanao's famous for, but more than just a textile, it is a time-honored handicraft showcasing Maguindanao's art, culture, and heritage. Next, we have the Panagalay Festival of Sulu. The traditional fingernail dance of Taosug people, this dance is performed during weddings, social gatherings, and other festive events. It is characterized by intricate hand and arm movement along with shimmering costumes and beat of the kolintang and gabang, both of which are traditional instruments. Literature is one distinctive part of culture. It can tell a culture's history through this. It serves as a heritage to be passed on from one generation to the next. The literature of ARMM varies from what province it came from. For the Taosu, they have poems called Tarasu. It is a part of oral tradition, though some literary pieces are also written. Some of the themes of their literary pieces are nature, cooking, and love. Katakata or Meren is one of the four Taosug narratives, along with the Kon Kisa or creation stories, the Osalan Kisa or origin stories. Focusing on Meren, it is a folk tale characterized by elements of magic and the supernatural. RMM also has literature which fulfills various purposes. One of these purposes is to contribute to the region's peace and prosperity. 
but how does literature aid in this? One way is that through various literary works, people, especially children, can envision conflicts and problems which will help them appreciate nonviolent solutions. Children's literature is possibly one of the best resources available to teachers. Using literature, teachers can present conflicts in such a way that children are able to visualize the conflict, empathize with the characters, and appreciate nonviolent resolutions to, to disputes. Another way is that through literature, the people can spread knowledge about their culture, traditions, and ways of life. Others can read about your home while you read about theirs in exchange. This will help people in opening their eyes about the beauty present in those cultures. Miriam Coronel Ferrer is the world's first female negotiator for the Mindanao Peace Talks. She was appointed in 2010 by President Benigno Aquino III to the government's negotiating team and took over as chain in 2012. Her book, Costly Wars, Elusive Peace, talks about the conflicts that occurred in the Philippines, especially in the ARMM region. This book reached international forums, which was why she became the chief negotiator in Mindanao. Before writing the book Costly Wars, Elusive Peace in 2013, she wrote a book back in 1994 along with the same theme of peace titled Peace Building and Meditation in the Philippines. These works help spread knowledge about peace as well as help promote it. It is crucial, especially during times of conflict, that people know how to avoid escalating the conflict and if possible, resolve it in a non-violent way. It also helps prevent conflict and disagreements from breaking out among people. According to Ferrer, with the help of the book, compromises were found so that both sides could attain the peace and security that they need and want. One of these purposes is to contribute to peace and prosperity. Costly Wars, Elusive Peace by author Miriam Coronel Ferrer is a book containing a collection of articles which the author had written and presented in many different national and international forums, all of which relating to armed conflicts that had occurred in the Philippines. According to Erlinda Montello Burton, PhD, this book is one of the most informative and thought-provoking documents that clearly elucidated the causes of events that led not only to very costly protracted conflicts, but the great loss of human lives over the years in Mindanao, that despite all the interventions or meditations pursued by some countries and agencies, local, national, and international, to find peace solutions for Mindanao, yet the culture of peace could not be sought but continued to be elusive. Containing articles with information regarding the cause of conflicts and what precedes them. This book aims to educate people on why conflict starts and how a person can prevent them. As they say regarding health, prevention is better than cure. And this too holds true for conflicts and disagreements. If people know how those can be avoided, then conflict don't need to happen and peace can be achieved. Peace and prosperity through literature, this is one of the goals of this book. Educating people on how conflict can be avoided can result in peace being maintained between individuals and between groups of individuals. This book is also reliable since according to Montello Burton, PhD, the publication of the book in 2013 is quite timely for this year, 2014 since. There has been some development with regard to GRP-MILF agreement to address the need for peaceful solutions along political, economic, and sociocultural dimensions. The author herself was appointed by the incumbent president of the Philippines to serve as chief negotiator on the GRP side. Her broad knowledge of the political upheaval created by both the communist faction and the moral liberation organizations were based on thorough research. This makes the book credible and reliable. This book is strongly recommended as one of the required readings in political science classes 
and Philippine academic institutions. This book contributes to building and maintaining the peace and prosperity not only in the region but even across nations.